All right, so life is good if you're the prince and the mightiest hunter in the realm. But, you know, things take a bit of a twist when you get sentenced to death by banishment. You are left for dead on the most inhospitable part of the continent. In fact, June doesn't even remember how he managed to survive. Uh, he knows that he was rescued by some traveling merchants who stumbled across him almost miraculously out in the middle of nowhere. And they've left him in one of the closest cities of any size. Uh, again, this is all outside of his realm. He has been banished. And he spent the last three years basically looking over his shoulder, um, waiting for that other shoe to drop, as they say. And remember, just because you're paranoid, doesn't mean it's not true. So finally, the you know day has come that he has been dreading. Someone has left him a note. And uh, yeah, it uh, definitely lets him know that they know who he is. So he's got two choices. He could make a run for it, because as far as he knows, there's still a bounty on his head, even though he has been banished. Or he could see who's found him. But, you know, curiosity wins over. He, he wants to know who's found him, what, what can be done about it. And surprise, surprise, it's not an assassin. It's not a mercenary. It's the king's master of spies, who, you know, of course, just happens to be his former lover, because why not? Yeah, Mikhail, master of spies, is putting together a, uh, an eclectic group of uniquely talented individuals. He's got an assassin, he's got a thief, he's managed to pick up a strong man, which in this story is basically somebody who, you know, uses his fists for money, beats people when they need to be beaten, you know, that type of thing. Uh, he's got a nobleman that's tagged along here, and now he just needs, he just needs June back, because June, being the crown prince, uh, is an integral part of this. After all, the plan is to kill the current god king which just happens to be June's brother. Daddy has passed off into the, uh, has, has passed from the mortal realm since June was kicked out. And Yoon now sits upon the throne, and he's, and he's not a very nice guy. So, we're going to put together a group. We are going to go ahead and somehow manage to approach the most highly protected man on the continent who happens to have a relic that makes him nigh immortal, and take him out. And if everything goes to plan, we will manage to crown the new king and survive this experience. But nothing's going smoothly. Nothing ever does. All of these people have their own personal secrets that they're hiding. They've got their own personal ambitions and motivations for why they're doing this. Some are doing it for love, some out of loyalty, some for retribution. And it's just, uh, like I said, it's, it's not going smoothly to the point where we're starting to think maybe somebody is uh, trying to sabotage the whole thing. And as we said before, just because you're paranoid doesn't mean it's not true. This book does its absolute best when there's action going on. It does a great job of twisting the plot, there are schemes within schemes, you never quite know everybody's motivation for everything. One of the nice things is that the book itself is done from different point of views, so you kind of see things here and there, but you get them as you get them. So you get the overall pictures while the characters, of course, they don't know each other's motivations necessarily. And yeah, it, uh, it, it, Keeps you, keeps you guessing. Things twist, things turn. Absolutely does a great job during that. On the other side, however, it also got a little romance in it, which, which is not a bad thing to me. You know, I don't, I don't mind a little romance. I don't mind characters who are in love with each other. But the romance is a little bit YA for me. This is not your spicy romanticy, nor is it your deep felt, you know, adult romance. We got a bunch of teens, we got a bunch of 20-somethings in here. And in what ends up in being a very quickly paced book, uh, 
the romance also gets a little quickly paced. We get a little too much friend, you know, enemies to, to lovers. We get a little too much. I can't afford to fall in love with somebody to, oh my goodness, I can't stop thinking about her. The, the romance is the weakest part of this. And I'm not just saying that because I don't like romance. I think if you look at other reviews as well, you're going to find that probably the romance was the hardest part for people to get on board with. The other thing, and this is just for the people who listen to the audiobook, and normally I love cast audio or cast narrations where everybody's got their own voice. Downside for this one is that the cast narration each does their own point of view chapter, which means each of the narrators has to do all the voices for all the characters. And it becomes quite apparent that they haven't done this in front of each other. You know, it, it's one thing, obviously, especially between males and females, to have different pitches for different voices just because, you know, not all the guys are going to be able to get as high notes as the girls would normally be speaking. Not all the girls are going to get the low notes the way the boys would normally be speaking. But they also give them different accents, especially like Mikhail. Um, some of them just give him a normal, everyday American voice. Uh, other ones, he's definitely got a bit of a, a British or possibly, no, I, I wouldn't say Irish, but definitely, they definitely give him an, an accent that is not American. And so as you're listening to it, it's you really quickly get used to whose point of view it's from by the narrator. Like I said, all the narrators individually did a great job. But when you have when you're switching between it and you basically got six different voices for each of the six different main characters, and that's not even including the side characters that come and go, that part can get a little confusing. It's like, wait, who's talking now? So as much as I would normally love the audiobook. And if you do love the audiobook, I will have a link down to the Libro FM yeah, in, the, in the notes. But I would really push for getting the physical book. I am giving this book a four. Uh, there were parts in the middle of it, especially during some of the romance where I was leaning three, three and a half. But the plot itself is excellent, and it wraps up on what I would consider a high note. It definitely sets itself up for book two. I'm 99% sure this is a duology. I don't see it going deeper than that, but it definitely left itself up for book two. And I did look it up. Book two is supposed to come out in January of next year, 2025. So I'm definitely reading book two. I got to see how this story ends. Book one, the plot itself. I'm all in for the plot. The romance, I, I, I could have done without. But yeah, I'm giving it a four. Pretty, pretty solid book. Like I said, if we got rid of that, if we gotten rid of the romance or at least made the romance a little more adult and a little less YA to me, uh, probably probably even a four and a half. But too much of the book is romance to, to, for me to give it anything higher than a four. Book is worth it. I think you'll enjoy it. Hope you guys have a good one.